In this video, I explain to you what Cohen's kappa is, how it is calculated and how you can interpret the results. Let's start right away with the first question. What do you need the Cohen's kappa for? In general, you use the Cohen's kappa whenever you want to assess the agreement between two raters. In the case of Cohen's kappa, the variable to be measured by the two raters is a nominal variable. Therefore, if you have a nominal variable, you use the Cohen's kappa. For your information, if you had an ordinal variable and two raters, you would use Candles tau. And if you had a metric variable, you would use the Pearson correlation. But that's enough theory for now. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say you have developed a measuring instrument, for example, a questionnaire, that doctors can use to determine whether a person is depressed or not. Now you give this measuring instrument to a doctor and have him or her evaluate 50 people with it. With your instrument, the first person, for example, is found to be depressed, the second person is found to be depressed, and the third person is found not to be depressed. The big question now is, does a second doctor come to the same conclusion? So with the second doctor, the result could now look like this. For the first person, both doctors come to the same result, but for the second person, the result differs. So you're interested now in how big the agreement of the female and the male doctor is. If the assessments of the doctors agree very well, one speaks of a high inter-rater reliability. And it is precisely this inter-rater reliability that the Cohen's kappa measures. So the Cohen's kappa is a measure of inter-rater reliability. The Cohen's kappa is therefore a measure of how reliably two raters measure the same. So far we have considered the case where two people measure the same. However, the Cohen's kappa can also be used when the same rater takes the measurement at two different times. In that case, the Cohen's kappa indicates how well the two measurements of the same person agree. So we can say that the Cohen's kappa is a measure of the agreement between two dependent categorical samples. It is important to note that with Cohen's kappa, you can only make a statement about how reliably both raters measure the same but you cannot make a statement about whether what the two raters measure is the right thing or not. So if both raters almost always measure the same thing, you would have a very high Cohen's kappa. Whether this measured value fits with the reality, thus the correct is measured, Cohen's kappa does not tell you. In the first case, one speaks of the reliability, and in the second case, one speaks of the validity. Now, of course, the question arises, how is Cohen's kappa calculated? That is not difficult. For this, we create a table with the frequencies of the respective answers. Here we have our two raters. Each of them has assessed whether a person is depressed or not. Now we want to count how often both have measured the same and how often not. So we create a table for ourselves. Here we have rater 1 with not depressive and depressive. And here we have rater 2 with not depressive and depressive. Now we simply keep a tally sheet. The first person rated both people as not depressed. So a dash goes in this place. The second person was rated by rater 1 as depressed and by rater 2 as not depressed. So a dash goes in that space. And in the third case, both raters have rated the person as not depressed. We now do this for all people. Let's assume our final result is as follows. 17 people were rated by both raters as not depressed. 
For 19 people, both raters chose the rating depressed. Therefore, if both raters measure the same, this person is on the diagonal. If something different was measured, the person is on the edge here. Now we want to know how often both raters agree and how often they don't. Rater 1 and Rater 2 agree that 17 patients are not depressed and 19 are depressed. So both raters agree in 36 cases. In total, 50 people were assessed. With these numbers, we can now calculate the probability that the measurements of both raters agree in a person. We calculate this by dividing 36 by 50. We arrive at the following result. In 72 of the cases, both raters assess the same in 28% of the cases, they assess differently. This gives us the first part we need to calculate Cohen's kappa. Cohen's kappa is given by this formula. Kappa is equal to PO minus PE divided by 1 minus PE. So PO, which is calculated. Now what is PE? If both doctors would answer purely by chance, so to speak, simply flipping a coin whether a person is depressed or not, they would surely come to the same result in some cases. And that is exactly what PE indicates, the hypothetical probability of a random match. But how do we calculate PE? To calculate PE, we first need the sums in each of the rows and columns. So we have 17 plus 8, which is 25, 6 plus 19, which is 25, 17 plus 6, which is 23, and 8 plus 19, which is 27. With this, we can now calculate the PE. In the first step, we calculate the probability that both raters would arrive at the rating not depressed by chance. Rater 1 rated 25 out of 50 people as not depressed, so 50%. Rater 2 rated 23 out of 50 people as not depressed, or 46%. The overall probability of both raters saying not depressed by chance is 0.5 times 0.46, which equals 0.23. In the second step, we calculate the probability that the raters would both say depressed by chance. Rater 1 says depressed in 25 out of 50 people or 50% and Rater 2 says depressed in 27 out of 50 people or 45%. The overall probability of both raters saying depressed by chance is 0.5 times 0.54, which equals 0.27. With this, we can now calculate PE. If both values are now added, we get the probability that the two raters coincidentally agree. Thus, PE is given by 0.23 plus 0.27, which is equal to 0.50. Therefore, if the doctors had no guidance and simply flipped a coin, the probability of such a match is 50%. And for sure, there could also be an other value than 50%. Now we can calculate Cohen's kappa. We simply insert PO and PE and we get a kappa of 0.4 in our example. By the way, in PO, the O stands for observed and in PE, the E stands for expected. Therefore, PO is what we actually observed and PE is what we would expect if it were purely random. Now we would like to interpret the results. 0.44 stands for moderate reliability. And finally, I'll show you how you can easily calculate Cohen's kappa for your data online with DataTab. Just go to datatab.net and copy your own data into this table. Now I click on the tab Reliability. Cohen's kappa is calculated for nominal variables. 
If your data was found to be metric, please change the scale level under Data View to Nominal. Now you just have to click on Rater 1 and Rater 2 and Cohen's Kappa will be calculated automatically. Here above you can see the cross table and here below you can read the calculated Cohen's Kappa. If you don't know how to interpret the result, just click on the interpretations in words. An inter-rater reliability analysis was performed between the dependent samples of rater 1 and rater 2. For this purpose, the Cohen's kappa was calculated, which is a measure of the agreement between two dependent categorical samples. The Cohen's kappa showed that there was a weak agreement between rater 1 and rater 2 with a kappa of 0.23. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.